Horse Racing Nation Studios with another Preakness Insider webcast. Tonight, I am pleased to announce we have Jesus Castanon with us. As always, Joe Christofek to his left. Now, it's a, special, it's a special week for Jesus. This is the five-year anniversary of Shackelford, that popular, popular horse with the big white blaze, winning the Preakness, odds of about, what, 12 to 1, won the Preakness, beat Animal Kingdom, and now we have Jesus here in the here in the office, and Jesus just so happened to visit Shackelford, an eight-year-old Shackelford, this morning. Want to tell us a little bit about your uh, reunion with Shackelford, Jesus? You can probably still run, right? Oh, yeah. That's the first thing I say. And then I had a couple guys come, you know, friends of mine come to Kentucky, and they we went and see him, and I told them, I said, man, look at that guy. And we still look like him and come back to the racetrack. You, get, you have a personal connection to him. Yeah. When you go up to Shackleford, does he know? I mean, people like to know this. Does he know you? I mean, do you have, still have, does he, you guys reminisce about old times or? Well, so yeah, you probably think that uh, he probably was a little bit of a, you know, he didn't know at the first, when I first got closer to him, but uh, once I sat by him and talking to him, he, he, he really responded to me. He was, well, he was pretty good. Now, now, a few other riders rode Shackleford over his career, but you're the one that he's he's recognizing. You're the one that had the big success with Shackleford. You're the one that knows Shackleford best. Yeah, I mean, I was lucky enough to be able to be riding, you know, to ride through his uh, whole career. I just, you know, I was blessed, you know, to be, to be able to be the rider. So. We're going to take you through his career. We're going to show you the Preakness. We're going to show you the Clark. But we were talking off camera before we came on kind of about his personality and his quirks, Jesus. And I think his personality and his quirks and the fact that he was an underdog a lot of his career made him a fan favorite. I mean, in my lifetime, I can't think of too many horses that people love more than Shackleford. I think part of it is your connection to the horse. You're very active on social media. You always proclaim how much you love the horse during your whole run with the horse. A big white blaze. Um... Had some antics in the paddock and the post parade. Uh, he would wash out. He would run on his wrong lead. He would break slowly from the gate sometimes. He'd run a bad race. People would write him off. Yeah. And then he'd prove everybody wrong again. Tell us about why he was such a special horse and how he was over, able to overcome some of his antics and be so classy. Yeah, you know what? Uh, uh, when I first rode him, he was in, in golf there. And uh, it really... He was an impressive race because basically he was coming out of a layoff. And uh, it was a mile and eight. And uh, Dale just told me, Jesus, you know, I don't think, you know, we're going to go ahead and see what happens to let him do this thing. And, you know, he's been out for a little while. And okay, so I got on a horse. He was, you know, he was a little happy, happy horse. And when he ended up winning, he was all over the place. Yeah. And I'm Pretty telling you, yeah, yeah. And I was, I was very surprised after that. And and then when I, uh, when I got to ride, ride more, he's, he was so what do you call it? Like uh, every time he get on close to the other horses, he was so watching, so excited. In the beginning, uh, in the beginning, I was a little concerned about it, but uh, seems like uh, every time he washed out. He was uh, he was on the game. He was ready to do it. Well, let's let's talk about that right away because I remember uh, a certain broadcaster, no fault of hers, of course, but really pointing out how Shackelford did not look like a horse ready to win Racing's Middle Jewel. She was talking about how how poorly Shackelford looked going into the gate for the Preakness. Well, you know, as as any other person on the outside of the race, they can see some horse going crazy and they obviously the first thing they want to go through the mind of a horse ain't got no chance because he's he's sweated, you know, he's sweating and uh, I don't think he's gonna be able to handle the pressure or whatever. Uh, but uh to me when I was on it I was more happy to see him like this. Really? Yeah. And uh, yeah. he came you know, he came up and he came up and do his job. I mean every time he was sweating and kicking and bucking he never tried to get me, got me off, you know. He just was happy to be out there doing his thing. Kentucky Derby, Joe, I didn't like him coming into the Kentucky Derby that year. Well, let's, let's progress up to that, because I want to yeah. talk about how he even got there. Because okay. We, we talked it. about he was ninth in his debut at Keeneland. He won his second career race at 25-1 with Freddie Lyon. Mm -hmm. You talked about the one-turn mile at Gulfstream. 
you go right from the one turn mile golf stream into the fountain of youth. You're 17 to 1, and he runs okay. He runs fifth behind Soul Dad. Did, did you know at that point, this is a big step, and Dale's not afraid to do that. Right. Look at Go Maggie Go. He goes right into the Oaks, right? Yeah. She runs a good race, she gets unlucky. Dale's not afraid to do that. You gotta be in it to win it. But at that point in the Fountain of Youth, even though you ran fifth, did you think that, hey, we can go on in Stakes Company or we need to maybe dial it back and oh, try an allowance race at that point? My, 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 my thoughts was a stay horse. Yeah. From the, from the first time I rode him. Uh, when I rode him in, in the big race, the Fountain of Youth, I came back and I told Dale, I said, Dale, this horse is special. We know we can go ahead and do it. I mean, never in my mind was you know never, I never was thinking that he was allowed for a, for yeah. for a second ever be. How many times? How many times did you come off a horse and tell Dale that this horse is special? Wow. Was that the only one? Oh, uh, Fabio Prado. Fabio Prado. I don't know. He's one of my favorites. Uh, first dude. So you're always right, is what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, most of the time I am. <laughs> no. Actually, you know, uh, uh, Dale is a pretty good guy. He's yeah. a pretty good trainer. He knows his horses. He knew about Padre Prado. And uh, he told me, I know his horses. Let's, let's see what happens. So give him a chance, okay? And Fumiona was uh, lucky enough to be on the horse to be able to break his maiden and the stakes. What about you run a Florida Derby next? You're 68 to 1. Nobody gives you a chance, right? And I remember coming off the turn because you talked about not liking him in the Derby. Yeah. I didn't see any reason to really like him in the Fountain of Youth. Coming off in the Florida off Derby. Fifth in the Fountain of Youth, yeah. And he turns for home on the lead, and I'm like, what? Yeah. And then dialed in, who is the favorite at this point for the Kentucky Derby, and way early in the year, he comes and gets you. Yeah. But barely. Yeah. Talk about what was going through your mind going into the gate for the Florida Derby and then almost winning it. And then obviously getting beat and a heartbreaker by then the Kentucky yeah. Derby player. Well, you know, now, um, before that race, uh, honestly, I was 100% sure that my horse, the Chaco from was going to run a good race. I didn't you know, you know, I knew that he was, in, I didn't even say that I wasn't going to win the race, but I knew he was going to give me a good race and I was going to be up there. Yeah. Coming on the, the race before, uh, he stumbled out of the gates. And that was my second time on him. So he didn't put him, I didn't put him, we didn't, we was not in the right position right away. And that's how, 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 that's how I learned how he won a few races. And then uh, when he come from the derby, I was, you know what, I'm gonna, I have a chance. Yeah. I have a chance. And, 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 uh, and they all knew about it. I said, we wanna go, just give everything you got. And he's gonna give you everything. So let's see what happens. And, he proved that you know from there on and from there on he was one of the, you know one of the best horses that I ever been on. Kentucky Absolutely. Derby was next, right? The Kentucky Derby was next after that close call in the Florida Derby and you know he, he ended up fourth, Jesus, but yeah. I, I think there was a period in the stretch where we're thinking, hey, this horse could win the derby. How'd you feel? Oh man, you know what? I, I mean, it just was amazing feelings going to the top of the When I get to the quarterfinal, I just lost it. I mean, I, I mean, I seen these people going, for, going up and down, and screaming. And obviously, the only thing, you, the only way you can see there is a white play, you know, the white. Uh, right. Play, and then, uh, people remember yeah, that. I, I'm understand. so glad that he's saying this now, Joe, because right. usually Jackies will say, "Oh no, I was cool as a cucumber. I was, I was in the moment. I was riding my race." But that's crazy. I mean, yeah. you're you're turning for home, and you have a lead, and you're kind of especially being a bit, you know, right in the first time in the, riding the Kentucky Derby is one of the most prestigious races in the United States. Let's call it the most. Yeah. Number one. Yeah, number one, and everybody, every every jockey wants to be on it. So me riding one of the best horses and one of the best races, and me being on the top from the gate to the purple, I was like, it was like a dream for me. And you ran fourth, you ran good. Yeah, yeah. And then Dale's like, you, and then did you talk to Dale after the Derby? And did you guys say, man, this horse has already run, you know, at Gulfstream and the Fountain of Youth, then the Florida Derby, then the Kentucky Derby. We're going to wheel him right back into the Preakness. What was the discussion after the Derby about, you know, jumping right back into Baltimore? Well, you know, like, um, we we knew that for, I mean, all, the, the horse already proved that 
he was like uh, like I am, of course. And the racing every single every single I was like every two weeks or whatever. And he proved it that he was you know he was sound. He will every time you go out there. It seems like every the closer you run him, the better he, he used to do well, you know. And and he went there and he, he enjoyed the game and the fitness. So now, what was there? Was there any different uh, with the Derby? You know, you think of one hundred fifty thousand people or more. You think of even more craziness or more. Uh, just excitement going on for for both the people and the horses. How was Shackleford in in the Preakness before the race, where everybody noticed it, as opposed to the Derby? Was it different, or was it pretty much the same? How we acted? Uh, it was it was it was pretty much the same. Okay. Yeah, it was pretty much the same. Do you do anything like in warm ups or to kind of maybe? Relax the horse or get his mind in the right yeah. place to run his. Is there anything you can do? Well, what I what I used to do with uh with, with Chuck, uh, I try to kind of take him away from all from all the horses because I know that uh, as soon as you, he step on the ground, he step on the, the track, I knew that he was going to start jump, dancing, and and uh, I guess uh, I wanted him to be like that, but uh, every time he was near another horse. He won. I mean, he is. He wanted to just go for it. You know, he won. He was like, you know, he wanted to fight. And, and, and this and is that's why I took, took him off from everybody. And yeah, and that never changed. I mean, he no. he did it all his career. Yeah. So and that was the best. You know, that was basically every time he did that, he was he ran his best. So when you saw him acting up, for lack of a better phrase, you thought it was a good thing. Yeah, I like that. The, the, the AP story recap from the previous. I just have the first couple lines from it. It said. Soaked with sweat, Shackleford, or Shackleford bucked and kicked until Crimmon finally shoved him into gate five at the Preakness. One half ton of horse flesh all but screamed to get me out of here. Less than two minutes after the gate sprang open, the nervous colt was a cool classic winner. You won, you held off Animal Kingdom, mm -hmm. made a furious late rally, you got to the wire. And then after the win, it was a huge win for Dale, it was a huge wow. win for you. He, he, you know, Dale's won a lot of big races, he'll always remember that. You'll obviously always remember it. But you were very emotional after it. You talked about your father and that yeah. your father was with you. You grew up in a racing family in Mexico. Yeah. Um, your brothers have ridden. Tell us a little bit about the feeling of winning the Preakness and how you just were overcome with emotion at that point. Well, uh, my dad my dad used to, um, he's the one that got, got us into the business. He used to train courses and everything. And his, uh, his main goal is to able to see us to ride a big race, and and um, you know, can I can I interrupt you for one second, okay. Jesus? Barbara Walters gets her guests to cry uh, on camera. I don't let Joe force you to cry on camera. We don't want to get too well, emotional. I, I started. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. No, sorry. but no, but you know, like, and then and, and then I uh, like. Uh, just just kind of like before I got to the. Before before I got to the wire, and, I, and just everything just came, came down to me about my dad. I wish he would have been there, you know. He, yeah. he, he, he I know just the year there, before. Yeah. He was, it was, it was, yeah. It was November, November before. Yeah. And he was a trainer. And he was a trainer, and he always was with us every time, and no matter what. If I, if I got to ride the last race late, he was there with us. He, yeah. he, he, he loved horses, and he wanted to see us, and top of, uh, you know, be able to ride a big race like that. And, me winning the race, so you know, it just my everything just came to me about my dad. And, but that was the main thing. I that's cool. It was a good, good feeling winning that race for him. Why don't we, uh, Joe? Why don't we take a second here, and on this emotional period of the of winning the Preakness, the 2011 Preakness, why don't we take a look back five years ago? It's actually May 21, so the five year anniversary will be this Saturday when they run this year's Preakness. Why don't we take a look back at that Preakness? Jesus Castanon riding Shackleford to a thrilling victory over the Derby winner, Animal Kingdom. Ready for the start. They're off in the Preakness. 
And Flashpoint, as expected, had a great beginning. And Shackelford's right alongside. Outside of them, Midnight Interlude away, running in third. Dance City, fourth to the outside of them. Then it's Concealed Identity Astrology is down on the inside. It's Flashpoint and Shackelford. And these two, no surprise, one, two, and moving right along to that first turn. Flashpoint the leader. Shackelford to the outside in second. That opening quarter blazing. 22 and 3 foot seconds. Astrology is third to the inside. Midnight Interlude is right there running at fourth. Dance City fifth behind them. Then it's a length and a half to Concealed Identity. Norman as Bjornsson is down on the inside. Mucho Macho Man is seven lengths off this hot pace. Isn't he perfect is next. And then it's Mr. Cummins followed by King Kanji to the inside. Hits four lengths back to Sway Away. And after that, Animal Kingdom. The Kentucky Derby winner, second last, leading only dialed in past a 46 and four half mile. Flashpoint, a neck in front of Shackelford as they head to the half mile pole. Midnight Interlude is two lengths off of them. Astrology is fourth down on the inside. Then it's Dance City running in fifth. Followed between horses as they move into the far turn by Norman as Bjornsson. Then it's King Kanji down on the inside. Mucho Macho Man is next. Animal Kingdom is beginning to move now, but he still has seven lengths to make up. Dialed in is also making some progress. It's Shackelford who will be the first one to turn for home. Three quarters went in 12 flat, and they're into the stretch. And Shackelford on the outside, the leader. Astrology coming up the rail. Dead City, Animal Kingdom in the center of the track, and he's closing in at the eighth pole. Animal Kingdom has to get to Shackelford. It is Shackelford in front. Animal Kingdom on the outside is coming. On the inside, Astrology third. Shackelford, Animal Kingdom. Here's the wire. Shackelford holds on to the Preakness. Animal Kingdom was second, Astrology was third, and Dead City after that was dialed in who ended up finishing fourth. But it is a wire-to-wire win by Shackelford who was just outside of Flashpoint. He takes the Preakness. All right, so there's Graham Motion and the disappointment on his face and Barry Irwin's. Animal Kingdom was rolling. But he just did not have enough room to catch Shackelford and all the pre-race problems that Shackelford had, what a race he ran. He ran a great race, Tom, and he ran a very similar race to the, the pace he set in the K Kentucky Derby. The first quarter was lightning fast, 22 and 3. Then they went 46 and 4 for the half mile, 112. Jesus Castanani was able to slow it down again and had plenty left in reserve for the mile and 3 sixteenths of today's race, not a mile and a quarter. Colors of Michael Lawfer and W.D. Cubbage being painted on the weather vane here at Pimlico after Shackelford, their forestry homebred colt, wins the Preakman. So Shackelford pulls the upset under Jesus Castanon, his first Triple Crown win, his first grade one win of any kind. Preakness again, Shackelford, one of the most popular horses in recent years. We just had a really good time here watching the Preakness and Shackelford's win. You did get a little emotional, didn't you? Yes, I did. Feels like it was. Uh, I was rather rather it right now. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it was interesting too, Jesus, because you were watching the video, and you know he's on his left lead, he's on his right lead. You knew you had astrology beat. You're looking around and thinking nobody else is coming, but you had to feel at some point that Animal Kingdom was going to be there, and he yeah. was. Yeah. But the wire got there before he did. Johnny V comes up on your outside, and I saw you kind of look over your shoulder. What was what was the exchange there? Uh, well, at that at that point, I knew I I just knew how far how far off he was behind me. Yeah. When I kind of looked, I said, "Well, he's gonna have a hard time." So like, my horse, my horse never gave up. He wasn't quitting. Right? He wasn't quitting. It it didn't appear. I, I just watched it again for the first time in a while. That I mean, you could have gone a little farther. You could have gone farther. Yeah, yeah. yeah, still. Shackelford was that type see, of horse. Yeah, see, that horse is, you know, uh, think about him that uh, um, if you put a horse next to him, he will fight. He will put you down first. Kind of like Nyquist? Yes, Nyquist. Nyquist is like, yeah. That's interesting. We're going to talk more about the Preakness and your thoughts on that a little later. You run in the Belmont then. I mean, this horse just keeps going. Tell us about the Belmont. Obviously, that didn't work out. You know that great. The track was sloppy. I think like a fifty to one shot one. That was ruler on the And I don't know if that horse ever won a race again. That was yeah. a really weird Belmont. Yeah. 
I was a slappy truck, you know, it was my person, you know, one month and a half, you know, I knew we, you know, I kind of tried to nurse him around, you know, tried to make the pace soften up, mm -hmm. so I would finish up strong, which, you know, he gave me a good race, you know, the track was in his favor. And you thought about looking back on it, maybe let him roll a little bit more and open up a little bit? No. Just wasn't going to be his day, no matter. Yeah, yeah, I mean... I mean, very, you know, when they, they, put, they put a little, they, they, by then they already knew the horse, they already knew the chuckle for was going to be on top and they was going to press me. Yeah. And that's what they did. And, and basically, when I, that horse, every time, every time when he's ready, he pulled, he used to pull me by himself. There, they kind of pressed me, I let him do his own thing. He was ready, he was, you know, he was ready, he was going to give it to me, which he did, but it wasn't, you know, it's a little, you know, they put a little pressure on me. Yeah. So we talk about him being an iron horse, right? You yeah. just keep going. You run second in the Haskell, eighth in the Travers, which is a, a tricky race track in of itself, especially with the horse of the long campaign. Mm -hmm. Second in the Indiana Derby behind Wilbur, who I thought was really impressive. Caleb Pop, Caleb Posse was third. That was a good Indiana Derby. Yeah. Um, then you run the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile and you lose to Caleb. Yeah. So tell us about like his progression after the Belmont moving forward. It's a lot of races and he just, you know, yeah. disappointed but he would always come back with a vengeance, it seemed like. I thought he ran yeah. a big race in the previous time. Yeah. You know, uh, yeah, coming I mean, uh, the court, the races that I got, you know, like the Travers, you know. You know, he, he ran and he wasn't he wasn't I'm gonna say, you know, he wasn't the same as he was uh, um, like uh, the, the previous or the, any other race, he ran a good race, you know, like sweating wise, you know, he was more calm and, and I was, uh, you know, I was a little bit of, why, what's wrong with this guy, you know, yeah. you know, he was a little calm and, and so, and then, uh, well, he ran the race and, and after that, you know, come back and did it again, he came back and pulled it off again. That's the thing about Shackford, I think, that right. was so appealing, I mean, a lot of things were appealing to his many fans. But he would he would occasionally throw in a race that wasn't his best, but he would just always bounce back. Oh, yeah. it wasn't bad for the betters too that believed in him, have faith in him going forward. Yeah, it's funny too because Brian, you're more of a historian than I am when it comes to racing. It'd be interesting to to find out how many horses have run in the Derby, Preakness, Belmont, Haskell, and Travers. How many horses run in all five? Yeah, that's that's rare. Yeah, that's rare. Yeah. That's rare. No, that's that ended up in the Breeders' Cup. He ran an one. Yeah, yeah. I I think we'd have to go back a few years offhand, Joe. I'm not thinking of one. Yeah, I mean, that's a testament to the Iron Horse that we're talking yeah. about. Yeah. yeah. Before we, can we do this before we go to next year? Let's 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 have some fun again. So many people love Shackford. Let's talk about today a little bit. He got out to the farm. Where's he? Where is he now? He's at Derby Farm. Darby Dan. Darby, 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 yeah, Darby, Darby, Darby Dan. Yeah, Darby Dan. Yeah. And uh, you, you told us a little bit about kind of getting to know him, but I mean, is is Shackleford the horse that you're gonna visit he thirty was, years from now? Does he come out of the stall? Like, what what was the visit like? Oh, he was the same. Does he come out? Did you graze him? Like, was I, he I run walked, around the field? No, he was. You know, I, I made him. You looking for a mare? Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> he was a, he's a ladies boy. He's a ladies boy. Yeah. <laughs> no, he, he was cool. He you know, came out. I well, actually I walked him for a little bit. And, nice. You know, he. Did you jump on top? I wanted to. Yeah. I wanted to. This didn't work out. I told him, you know, just get the saddle back on him. <laughs> well, he has two crops now. Um, his first crop are babies of this year. And. All the reports, Brian, that I've heard are that the Shackleford babies look amazing. I think you said he's used to the one, ran at Belmont, um, his first one ran at Belmont a couple of weeks ago? Uh, yes, he did, yeah. He ran a good race, he was uh, five and a half. Um, yeah, yeah five, five and a half. And uh, he ran a good race, run four, slap the track. Yeah. I think, you know, this guy is going to throw a lot of good babies. And uh, you hope so because you have one and one on the way. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that. I got a nice little yearling, and and uh, she's she's someone to want it. She acts just like daddy. Blaze. Blaze. Yeah, Blaze. And uh, she she's a, you know she likes to she likes to fight. She's a very independent girl. What do you call her? She doesn't have a name. Not yet. No. No. I, she have a nickname. I just call her. We call her Baby Chuck. 
Baby shark. There you go. Yeah, baby shark. Wow, she might be end up with end up with that name. That's a good <laughs> name. I guess. And who's the mayor, Jesus? Uh Miss Dora. Miss Dora. Yeah. It's a nice little filly. Now she's she's up in Lexington and ready to have her second baby by next week. Another shack of Fernando away. Yes, sir. Yeah, nice. So I mean the shack story doesn't end with the three year old year. Let's talk a little about the four year old year. Um, you know, he he runs uh, the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile, he runs in the Don, he finishes seventh as a favorite, third in the Carter, Jackson Bend, wins the Churchill Downs, and, it, uh, and he beats Amazombie, who was good. Yeah. Well, how did that feel for you, the Churchill Downs being at Churchill Downs? You've ridden him in the Derby. <coughs> really big gathering of Shackleford fans. I mean, he had a fan yeah. club. I mean, people. People, they wanted to build a statue for the horse. Joe, Joe, I think, I think they called themselves the Shackheads. Yeah, yeah. Shackheads. Shackheads. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty. Yeah, he has a lot. He had a lot of. Uh, he has a lot of fans. You know, when going to the race, I knew. I you know. I knew this one be. Honestly, I thought we know. I knew. I knew this one be a tough race, but I knew what I had. You know, and, and that horse loves Churchill Downs, and that was the first time going in a short distance like for him. And Seven furlongs, right? And Amazon he was a piece. I just my thoughts was he was gonna let the horse do his thing and he's gonna do the fight and you do the rest on the lane. So I did it. And it worked out good and he won. Okay. Not not to throw a wet blanket on this, but then he went straight from the Churchill Downs win, which is a tough race to win. Shaco for the previous winner coming to win that big sprint race in the sp uh, Derby Day. Then he goes to the Met Mile and you. Could be on. Yeah. Yeah, I had a spill two weeks before the race. I broke my hand and uh, it was it was pretty tough, you know. Uh, that was the first the first thing went through my mind it was my, my big horse. I went to the hospital and I, I didn't want to hear what I did. they told me about it, and they told me, you know what, Jesus, you wanna have to be off for a couple of weeks, for two months. So I couldn't ride it. But uh, Jan Velasquez brought him good. He's a great, one of my best riders that I've seen. One well, good friend of mine as well. And the rider that you held off in the previous. <laughs> yeah, and basically he knew about Chuck. So yeah. he went and did the right thing. But speaking of great riders, that Ramon Dominguez took over for a couple races. Yes, and had a good rider too, yeah. And the Breeders Cup Dirt Mile, unlike the year before, Shackleford broke slow, which he tended to do, and a lot of times that's when he would get himself in trouble. Mm -hmm. Because he couldn't get position, he was four or five wide, and I remember at that point, it was everyone was writing him off, like, yeah, going to stud, he's done. Dale says, "We're gonna run in the Clark. It's my home track. Tri triumphant return, and not only a triumph triumphant return for Shackleford at Churchill Downs, but also the return of you yeah. to the saddle." So tell us how <laughs> that all played out and how you get the mount back. Well, um, I knew I knew going to the you know. Breeder's Cup, see, you know, he was probably one of the last race. And after he didn't, you know, everything went, you know, didn't go as good. Um, I knew there was another running in the car. So, you, but, but before the Breeder's Cup, you thought you were never going to get to ride Yes. Again. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. That's the thing. I said, well, he wins at the Breeder's Cup, so I never want to ride him again, so he's going to be done. So, he's going to be. So, he ended up finishing fifth, sixth. Yeah. And, um, and then um, I That's spoke. Seven, actually, yeah, seven. I spoke to Dell. It's funny though. I'm gonna, I sent him a text. Do you just think we know Dale very well? So yeah. yeah, he's a big fan of the show, a big supporter, and just that conversation, like recreating it in yeah. my mind. Tell us how. Yeah, that. Tell him about it. So listen, about it. You know, I, I will. I know you're trying to. I know you're gonna retire the big horse. So just let me ride it one more time. I want him to ride. I want him. I want him to go home with a win. Was there a vodka cranberry involved? <laughs> it was a tequila. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. See. Okay. So then Dale. I mean, then you tell him this, and and I can say this about Dale. And Dale rides a lot of different jockeys, but he has a certain loyalty. And I'm sure all the things that you went through together with with Shackleford. In the back of his mind, there's a certain loyalty there, and he knows the connection. So yeah, he did it take a lot of convincing, or was it easy? 
no, you know what? He he sent me a text back. He said, you know what? Save me tomorrow morning. So as soon as he said that to me, I got excited. I was money. See you on the camera. I'll get back on that. So, yeah. Well, having having like, heard him talk about this race, I, I don't think there's a race that Dale Romans has enjoyed more than when Shackelford won at Clark. The classic, the Preakness, you won that, but which one was more important to you? Which one was more of a uh, an emotional moment for you? The Preakness or that great Clark King had one? Man, going out uh, on top, man, that's, that's pretty that's, cool. That's, yeah. Well, once, man, this is a, that's, I, I'm going to say both of them. Uh, I mean, Preakness, you know. We're not, we're not going to let you yeah. uh, leave until you give us a, a, uh, a situation. Well, the last <laughs> race in the, the Black Army Cup. Clark there you go. Yeah, because I know he was gonna be. That was, that was his last race. That was uh, with me, and we had uh, all the fans. The around. crowd was nuts, wasn't it? It was. Yeah, it seemed like everybody just went there just to see Chad. Yeah. And and I think you know he was one of the favorites. There were there were several horses they were betting on that that fall race in 2012. But I think I think deep down a lot of people weren't really expecting Shackleford to win that race. Yeah. Is that also part of the, the good feeling? Yeah. Yeah. It Proving. was it was it was yeah. Um it was pretty good. I mean, like I say, you know, he 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 then the environment in the, he always was an uh, underdog. Mm -hmm. Um and going to going to that race I felt a lot of confidence and yes, coming up uh losing getting beaten in the Bridge Cups, mm -hmm. the way he ran is I mean, you know, I don't think that really like you said, you know. They ain't gonna, they ain't gonna do it again. So let's watch it. it. Let's watch it. Let's go with the video tape. We're gonna that. watch Jesus Castanon and Dale Roman's favorite race, the 2012 Clark Handicap. Shackelford goes out a triumphant winner at Churchill Downs. Three racers in the gate. And they're off in the Clark handicap. Mission Impassable flashes early speed on the outside, and Shackleford is through on the inside. Shackleford is the leader. It's Shackleford out in front to take charge in D Racing in second, and then I have the leopard to the inside with the grey Mission Impassable. Luna Victory is racing out wide, now drifting in, racing in fifth, Bourbon Courage in sixth, Cease is in seventh, Steel Case is in eighth, and at the back of the field is Fast Falcon. They went through the quarter in 24 and 1, and Shackleford has got a comparatively easy lead here of a length and a half over Take Charge Indy, letting him get away in second, and then on the outside, Mission Impassable is in third, Eye of the Leopard over racing to the inside in fourth, Luna Victory is in fifth. A break of two lengths back to Bourbon Courage. Cease on that one's outside. Steel Case just nudged along and at the back of the field is Fast Folk in the half in 48 and 3 as they go through halfway in the 138th running of the Clark Handicap. Shackleford has another half mile of his career to race and he has the lead in the Clark by a length and a half. Take Charge Indy is in second. Luna Victory now towards the inside. Mission Impassable has already been ridden along. So too is Bourbon Courage. Eye of the Leopard has checked out as they now begin to make the turn. And Shackleford is still in hand around the outside. Take Charge Indy is now in second and taking dead aim at Shackleford. But Shackleford has the lead into the lane. Take Charge Indy now in second. On the inside is Luna Victory. Then down the outside staying on is Bourbon Courage. Shackleford, though, has turned away. Take Charge Indy, the last to challenge, will be Bourbon Courage. But the one who's got the courage in spades is Shackleford. He's out in front, but he needs the line. Shackleford wins the clock. Shackleford goes into retirement with a brilliant, emphatic, front-running victory in the 138th running of the Clark Handicap. Wow, I hope all the Shackets are watching tonight because we just watched Shackleford go out a winner in the Clark. I'm getting emotional on that basis. Yeah, How do you I feel watching this game? Man, it feels pretty good. I love it. Shackleford, he'll do that to you. Yeah. Um, I, we have a large studio audience tonight, folks. <laughs> we have people watching there at home, obviously.
So if there are any questions from anyone on Twitter, for example, please send them out to Jesus. We're talking Chaco for now, but maybe we take a question from our large studio audience. Do we have one? Anyone? You, sir, in the front. Yes. Um, you mentioned your favorite race was the Clark Candy Cat. Being it was in the fall, did he lather up and do his dancing? Oh, and... You know what? He, he did a little bit. Not much. Not much. Cooler night. Were you worried? Uh, I, I was a little bit. Yes, I was a little bit. Um, but I, confidence, I was 100% that he wasn't, he wasn't going to be able to pull it off. You were getting back on him, and it kind of shows during the race that you felt pretty confident as he led furlong after furlong. Yeah. I feel, yeah, let, let, him, let him do his own thing and, I mean, let him run his own race, and when it was time for me to pick it up, he's going to move on and let him. Uh, off camera, we were talking about, Brian asked you, what race made you more happy, Preakness or, or this race? And obviously your first grade one is the Preakness. It's hundreds of thousands of people. It's national TV. But for a different reason, you getting back on, last race, Breeders' Cup went bad. Lots of reasons for Chet to once again reprove himself. Does that make that just as good as the Preakness? Uh, yes. I would say it's, 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 it's more, wow. more emotional than the Preakness now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, seeing, you know, knowing that he was going to retire and me being back on him, that was a cool, that was good. Jumping forward, you, you own uh, one yearling by Shackelford. You, you are about to have a, uh, another uh, a weaning be born soon from Shackelford. Can you detach yourself from your feelings for Shackelford and... and Kind of assess him as a as a potential sire. You think he's gonna be able to uh, carry over things to his offspring? Oh yeah. Oh, but, no, no, is, is that mental? Is that physical? Is that is that heart? What, what is he's Shackelford? He's a horseman, so looking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's, he's, I would say that it's hard. He he's gonna he's gonna carry his uh, all his stamina to the next ones. That's fun. I mean, right now, Brian, if you know this, and Jesus, when a Rachel Alexandra baby runs or a Zendata baby runs, people get excited. I think when Shaq babies start showing up, I mean, there's going to be a lot more of them, so it's not going to be so exclusive. But people are going to get excited, especially the ones that have the yeah. big white blades that look like them. Yeah. I don't want to call him a cult hero, but in a way, Shackleford is. I mean, he was yeah. a top notch grade one winner, classic winner. But there's just something about Shackleford that, that excites people, and, yeah. and it's going to happen through the babies. Yeah, and I, you know, like he said, you know, you're going to see a lot of babies coming. I mean, they, he's going to be a good style. I mean, all his babies, to me, seem like they all they all want to be good, and, and uh, you you'll see a lot of a lot of babies from him winning a lot of big races. So you're associated with Shackleford by the general public. A lot of people probably don't know you won. To over 2,300 races, you've won 16 graded stakes, uh, you've put together a nice career. Now, back at Churchill Downs, you just recently came back from an injury not too long ago again. So it's like you've got all these great memories, have this great career, but you have to continue to you know build your business back up. And it's a tough colony at it Churchill. Is. It's the toughest I've seen. Uh, you've been to Arlington. You've had a lot of success all over the country. Where, how do you see things going, like moving forward? Because to me, when I'm handicapping a race and you're on the horse and I like that horse, bam, I'm on the air. I'm picked because I trust strong finishers, smart rider. Like to me, you're as good as anybody in the room. So how how do you feel like moving forward about what the short term and the longer term, you know, your thoughts moving forward on? And riding and staying at Churchill, Kentucky? Well, you know, it just it's always get a little tough when you come back of an injury. You know, I had a, two injuries last year. I was out for four months. And uh, that kind of, you know, at that point, I was, I was, uh, I would say that I was riding more than I'm doing right now. Mm -hmm. And it takes a little bit of time for me to kind of back and build your business up because once you all, 
for so long, basically they lose know your business. And uh, yeah, Kentucky is, uh, you know, it's getting tougher, you know, you got a lot of good riders, young riders. Um, and I'm, you know, to me, I mean, I'm just gonna keep trying my best that I can and hopefully I'll be able to pick it up, you know. Yeah, I mean, trainers know what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So it's just a matter of, you know, you yeah. know, getting back into those barns and, you know, getting some solid calls. A lot of people are watching tonight. They say, who are some of the trainers that you really want to ride for again? Dale Romans. Dale, are you watching? I mean, watching he might be. I'll be in your barn tomorrow morning. <laughs> no, I mean, no. No, but yeah. there are other guys, there are trainers that you have good relationships. Yeah, I do get along good with everybody, you know. I'm, I'm always, I uh, like to go and see them. I mean, uh, the, good pe the people that I have been riding, they're, they're good people. Well, well, we heard you might not even be the best rider in your family. Oh, man, don't, don't bring that up. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a bunch of shackles for pictures in your house, but you've got one picture that's more popular yeah. than any of them. Why don't you tell us about that one? Well, that's the only one you got. That's the only picture you got in that. <laughs> My wife, yeah. She, uh, the, the, the picture she has up is, she's beating who? Who, who, who is she, who is she beating? Oh, yeah, well, she's beating, uh, uh, some jazz, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she's beating everybody else. She is. Former well, Rolanda Simpson, yeah. now Rolanda cast and on together, been married a long time. She was a good rider during her day, and she was an Eclipse Award nominee. Yeah. And, uh, you know, so if anyone, what is it like, you know, being married to a former jockey? She has to understand your business and how yeah. things go, and the highs and the lows, and you've had some incredible highs. Yeah, you know, we work it out. Um, she has really supported me big time when things are down, you know. First one that I go to is my wife, and she understands the business, and she knows how everything goes. So. As it should be, and she's we were lucky enough to have her. So she is have her here tonight. She just show her pictures and say, Here, see, you gotta just keep trying harder so you don't get beat like this. <laughs> Motivation, right? Yeah. All right, so let's switch gears again, Brad. Let's talk about this year's Preakness. And you've had a chance to see, you know, the horses up close and personal when they were here at Churchill. Mm -hmm. Talked about the comparisons between Shackleford and Nyquist, in that they don't like to be passed. Very game, and that's Nyquist's maybe best quality is he's won every race. Yeah. Is it tough to take something away from him and say, well, this horse can beat him, this horse can beat him, this horse can beat him, when he's never been beaten and he's smart? He's smart, yeah. I think that no, it's not be tough to beat that horse coming to the previous. I mean. Like you said, you know, horse or half never get beat. And he all he all, the only thing he knows about winning winning race, nobody has really gone by. So he's gonna keep it going. Smart horse. Are there any horses uh, going back that you've seen that you would compare Nyquist to? I mean we we mentioned we mentioned Shackleford of course, but anybody else that you kinda of think, boy, when you see Nyquist, it reminds you of um not not He's an original. Yeah, not not really. Haven't really seen another ones much about you know like comparison to Chatterford. Yeah. You've ridden the Preakness. You won the Preakness. Do you think Nyquist's ability, tactically, how the race is going to set up? Do you think his ability suit that racetrack? Oh yes, definitely, definitely. That track is going to be just just perfect for that horse. You know. It, I know they wanna be they wanna be quite you know few going after him and but no matter what they do they you know still he's gonna be a fighter and he's gonna finish it all. So Brian, we saw the draw today and we'll talk a little bit more about the pre preakness itself, but you have um, eleven horses, Nyquist yeah. drew the three. Yeah. I, I think it's interesting now when you won the preakness you you, you were right on the uh, throat latch of a of a Wesley Ward horse yeah. flashpoint. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, there, there might be uh, a little bit more speed in this race, and he does have some speed drawn to the outside. Uh, he's mm -hmm. right outside Uncle Lino, who might might just be the pace setter, but there are a bunch of horses outside him that might want to kind of yeah. jam they, up they the works a little bit. They, they want to go in and try to go up there. I know that um, Sedgewater is going to come and get it. 
I mean, if that's how I see it, you know. I mean, like, you know, if you want to try to go in prison, somebody coming out of the base, even Dale Romans, uh, Cherry Wine. Cherry Wine, Cherry Wine. He's another person coming out of the base. And Dale Romans is very, you know, he you knows what he's doing. So. The Wow Band's the other speed, and Wild we were band. talking about uh, Florent and how he's kind of ascended in the jockey ranks. He was our guest last week. <clears throat> when you look at a race, Jesus, whether it be the Preakness or any race, mm -hmm. and you see a rider change to kind of a finesse rider, Florent's kind of a finesse rider, but he's on the speed horse, do you think to yourself, well, oh, maybe they're going to try to change tactics a little bit, or do you try not to handicap it and just go by what the horse has done in the past without looking at the rider? Do you handicap riders as much as you handicap horses? I do, I, I do handicap, uh, first I handicap the horse, and I, like you say, in, uh, about handicap the riders. Um, a rider like that, if the horse breaks from the gates and stumble, they want to open its end. You know, they want to just stand, let the horse come out of the gate, it's like the horse stumble for some reason, he's going to just try to find a way to get himself in a good spot that way and go from there. Well, let's do this. Uh, I'm going to put you on the three to five shot. Kentucky Derby winner, un unbeaten champion Nyquist in the Preakness. You're riding Nyquist in the Preakness. Unfold this race a little bit for us and, and tell us what you want to do as the rider of Nyquist, where you want to be, and where you want to be as they straighten out on, on the road well, to the Preakness winner. Yeah. Um, I, I will, you know, know, know my horse, like, you know, my my horse well enough. They, if I if I can come off the pace, like, you know, if I can come, uh, uh, I'll be laying close to the pace. If I see a lot of horse with a lot of speed, I I just put myself in, myself in a spot where I can be comfortable without without have to use my lap, and and then just when I get to you know to me, he's gonna let him do his race from the three point. So if, if, if there is some of the speed on the outside, Joe mentioned Lao Band, there's a couple others, uh, a Biden star, yeah, that, that, that might rush up from the outside. Do you, do you pull back a little bit? No. No. You, let you, know, you, just, you just gotta see, you just gotta see how the other ones wanna go. I mean, me as a rider, if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna speed run and then speed horse, I'm gonna just try to, you know, I'm gonna help my horse out of the gates. This guy come out same as me, but he's rushing up there. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna he's, like, he's gonna die die to go to the front. If I'm gonna go to the front, this guy's gonna kill my he's gonna kill my horse and he's gonna kill himself. So he's gonna he's gonna he wants to do the lead, I'm gonna let him go because he's rushing out there. He's using his horse to take a lead. So it doesn't make any sense for me to go ahead and chase him. And that was certainly up to yeah. this point seems like a horse that yeah. will kind of relax the yeah. matter where he is if he's he, first or a little part of that. Yeah, he proved it. I mean, look at the, the derby, he was laying third. He basically, he, he broke sharp, you know, he... Mario Luteris, he's a good rider, good rider. He showed, I mean, he was able to sit back and put him, himself in a good spot. And he was in the right position when he gets to the top of the stretch. When you're on a three to five shot in any race, but particularly a big race like this, and you have a horse with tactical speed, in the scenario that you just mentioned, do you try to make sure you don't get the horse beat and give them a chance, even if it means being three wide and losing ground? Versus when maybe you're on a longer shot and you've got to cut some corners and maybe try to save right. some. Does, is that, does that make sense? I mean, you've got to give the three to five shot horse a shot. Yeah. The cigar being in the clear, I'm, I'm on the best horse kind of scenario. Yeah. At that point, you know, you just kind of, you just let the court, I'm going to say, you set the ground on the first turn and then get him out. Yeah, and if I, you know, it's time to make a run, you just get him out, you know. I mean, you're the best horse in the race. Do other truck riders try to get you beat? That's <laughs> <I, laughs> a good question. I, I, I try to get, no. Nah. You know you where know, I'm at? Yeah. I'm I'm gonna be I'm gonna drive my horse to win the race and I know if you got you know the best horse in the race I'm gonna try to beat you and I'll do whatever I can to get you beat. With yes. your horse. With my horse. Not but necessarily. Not, but if it, if it doesn't work out like that, I'm not gonna go ahead and do it. Like oh okay, you know. Right. Just make them earn it. Make, yes. Especially in a triple crown right. scenario. I mean I think that's fair and I think everybody appreciates yeah. that. If you're if you're Kenta Sormo going into this preakness with the second choice the horse that just came out of a good Kentucky Derby riding exaggerator, are you kind of licking your chops at the thought of 
quite a bit of speed with Night Night Quest. Well, he said that, yeah, he's he said, yeah, no, it's just kind of storm, he's a smart rider, and I know what he's gonna do, he's gonna he's gonna be tough. That's a great question though, but if you're on exaggerator and you know you've gotta come from the back of the pack. I pull myself a little bit closer. You do, okay. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, do you take some chances? Do you worry? Because you're going to need a little racing block yeah. to beat Nyquist because you're going to have to come through traffic. Yeah. You're going to have to stay and avoid tiring horses in your face. Mm -hmm. Some of it you can avoid and some of it you can't. Right. But when you know the other horses in the race, you think to yourself, well, I know this horse is going to be mid-pack. I'm going to try to follow him if I can. Is there a little bit of that? Yeah, some, yeah. Yeah, you look at it that, that way, yeah, you can see who's going to make a move, make a move a little early and then you kind of see it right out, it's kind of fall and then he's, when he's back and you, you get, you know, basically the horse in front of you is going to take you where you want to be. Right. Now you're farther back from like was early in the race probably, certainly in the derby or maybe a little closer to in the Preakness. Is it is it harder to kind of put an X on the spot of Nyquist coming from farther back? You're saying maybe a little closer? Is that just to keep an eye on Nyquist? Well, you know, you know when I really, you just want to try to ride your own race. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not thinking too much about, you know, just ride your horse how the horse likes to be ridden. You can't yeah. take your horse out of there again. Right. Yeah. Okay, so let's get down to the nuts and bolts of <laughs> handicapping this race, Joe. We, we, we've talked about a few. This is, uh, we're going to turn Jesus into his own jockey agent right now. And you have the option of riding any horse in the Preakness. Is it is it Nyquist first, Exaggerator second? That's your choice, or no choice. you're not picking Exaggerator to upset Nyquist? Not in the, not, not in the Preakness. Who else, if you couldn't get one of the top two horses in the Preakness, the two heavy favorites, who would you want to jump on in this year's Preakness? We're talking about Stradivari, right? The horse that won a Keeneland by yeah. 15 yeah. Like Pletcher. Yeah. yeah. Do you, and this is a great question, too, Jesus, because you've written a lot of stakes races. This horse has only run, what? Three times. Three times in his career, and only once since December, and he's never really been tested. Is it a big, 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 big deal when you have a horse with that much talent that hasn't been tested in a stakes race to say, okay, they've got the talent, but they don't have the experience? How much of it is experience when you win these big races with these horses, and how much of it is just the horse is better? The rest of them is that a balance of both? Because Radovari looks great on paper. Yeah, he's never run against this caliber. Right, right. But I think uh, I think the the way he has done it, he has really impressive. He has really done it, done it pretty impressive. And uh, doing it like that, you know, I mean, he is can he can basically he can run with anybody. I would agree. Yep. Yeah. He's, he's Ta talent wise, he could be on par with Nyquist and Exaggerator. I want to ask one thing about this post position draw because I think yeah. Nyquist three, Exaggerator five, okay, that's uh, uh, middle of the road, I guess. But Stradivari, I think, was an interesting draw in that the third choice and the lightly raced third choice drew the far outside 11. Is that something you like to see well, in the source? I mean, you, you, uh, well, for, my, for my experience, what I do, I check, I, I, um, I handicap the horse, whatever is uh, in, inside of me. What, what kind of speed he, he, he has any speed at all. Mm -hmm. If he doesn't have any speed, then I'm going to pull myself and rush up and be able to close. You know, I'll, I'll save some ground in the first turn. Bomb run in yeah. the first turn, right. too. Yeah. So that's a big out. And then if you, if you got, yeah, you got somebody got speed, and then you'll be able to kind of go with him and then drop over with him at the same time, you know, without, you, you, without have to use your horse too much. I think the 11 post is good for Stradivari because you've got no horse next yeah. to you. You've got the long run in the first turn. You've got, he's a fast horse, but he's a rateable horse. And I think that's what people need to realize too. Yeah. When you've got a fast horse and they run off with you mm -hmm. versus a Shackleford or a horse that you can get them to relax. Mm -hmm. A speed horse that's rateable is the most dangerous horse in the race. Yes, definitely. Yeah, my, my partner actually just uh, interviewed, uh, Matt Shipman interviewed Todd Fletcher a day or two ago. And uh, he asked him what they're working on in the mornings with this other race horse. And Todd said, right now, we're working on keeping him relaxed early, letting him fall back behind the horse a little bit, yeah. getting used to that. So I think we I think we know a little bit about the strat uh, strategy yeah. of Stradivari from the 11 Hall. Fellowship is next to him in the gate. He's the 10. He has very little early speed, but there is speed uh, just inside them. 
the mm -hmm. nine, the eight, the seven all have some speed. And collective's interesting. I mean, you know, Baffert wasn't real thrilled about his three-year-old crop this year, including more spirit. Lots of live up to with American Pharaoh. But you just look at his races. I mean, he won the Sunland race. He won the Lexington at Keeneland. was very impressive in that race. He's a progressive horse. Sometimes, Jesus, it takes horses a little while to progress both physically and mentally. The best three-year-olds now might not be the best three-year-olds at the end of the year. Right. It's a combination of a lot of different things. Shopperford didn't come from too much of a, a foundation before the Florida Derby. He, 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 you know, he, you know, he right on, he was uh, showing off right away. Yeah. Joe, this has been fun. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, just all of it, you know, reliving. Just to me, like, being a Shackelford fan, but also being one of those handicappers and analysts that was always skeptical when he'd run a bad race, and I'd be like, oh, yeah. I can't take Shackelford at 3-1. to one. He made me look stupid a lot, so did you, Jesus. So <laughs> you remember that, and it's a horse that you'll never forget. I mean, I'll never forget. And you'll certainly never forget. So thanks for sharing those stories with us. Thank you. Good. And thanks for jo making Joe look silly on occasion. <laughs> That's always Oh, and happy on a regular basis. <laughs> yes, it does. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so we're going to take a break, and then we've got the Derby Wars webcast coming up with uh, Barry Spears and me in about a half an hour. Emily, is Emily joining uh, and me tonight? We've got May Emily tonight, yeah. So oh, that's awesome. Fun. Okay, she but, likes to make me look stupid, too. So wow, I'm that's... That's, uh, that's uh, well, I won't go any further on that topic. <laughs> hey, Zeus, it's been a pleasure. And folks, thank you so much for watching the uh, Preakness Insider Edition. It's great to have Jesus Castanon, rider, of course, of the 2011 Preakness winner, Shackelford. We will see you again next week with new guests. We've got some great guests the next few weeks. we got Jesus tonight. Great show with the five-year anniversary. Let, let's, let's keep them on We're suspense. We're looking forward to yeah. some we, we won't tell them the guests yet. No, we don't, because I don't know. Plus, you got to chase people down. I had to get on my knees and plead with Jesus. Please, Jesus. No, no, they want to be here. Thank you for the studio audience, for Jesus being here tonight. And we'll see you next week. 27-20, Animal Kingdom just beaten a half length.